give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh Lord. Welcome to Calvary's Pulpit Ministry and the teachings of Pastor Lumide Emmanuel. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do and along with your wisdom develop common sense and good judgment. Get ready for an impartation of wisdom as you listen to the Apostle of Wisdom. This morning let's open to Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33 starts in a series this morning. Depending on how far we go, it may take us three to five sessions to complete this series. Let's see how far we go today. Isaiah 33 from verse 1. God's word declares, Woe to you who plunder, though you have not been plundered. They didn't plunder you, but you were plundering. And you would deal treacherously Though they have not dealt treacherously with you. Nobody did treachery against you, but you are doing treachery. He said, when you cease plundering, you will be plundered. When you now say, I don't want to plunder again, that's when your own plundering will start. And when you make an end of dealing treacherously, they will now begin to deal treacherously with you. That means what you sow... You will now begin to repeat. Verse 2. O Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be the arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people shall flee. When you lift yourself up, the nation shall be scattered. And your plunder shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar as the running to and fro of locusts he shall run upon them the lord is exalted for he dwells on high he has filled zion with justice and righteousness verse 6 which is where we are going to wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation the fear of the Lord is his treasure. When you look at our text this morning, you realize that one way or the other, it looks like Nigeria. It looks like the situation we're going through right now, coupled up with the global crisis that is going on all over the world. God has promised that this year is our year of open heavens and there shall be showers of blessings. And as people of God, all we have to live by is the word of God. But if you look at these few verses of scriptures that we have read, you will realize that in the midst of all the things that were said from verse 1, verse 6 gives us a secret. Verse 6 says, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. So when you find yourself in times like this, with what is happening globally and what is even happening in our own nation, when you find yourself in times like this, what will stabilize you? When you find yourself in times like this, what will secure you? Where is your stability? Where is your security? That's what verse 6 says. It says, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your time and the strength of salvation. And then the fear of the Lord is a treasure. So at times like this, we need to fear God and make sure that our relationship with God is what it's supposed to be. We make him our source and we live according to his plan and his purpose because that is the key to all that God wants to do. At times like this, we need wisdom, we need knowledge in order to be stabilized and in order to be strengthened. So in the next few weeks, I want to begin to share with you what I've entitled Wisdom for Open Heavens. Wisdom for open heavens. Wisdom for open heavens. Or wisdom for winning in troubled times. 
depending on how you want to look at it. Wisdom for open heavens or wisdom for winning in troubled times. People of God, when you look at the scripture we have just read, I hope you have your notes and it's a, it's a teaching session I'm teaching, so you have to have a note and a pen to make sure you write down. There's going to be a lot of things we're going to be looking at. Uh, it's not going to be a shouting and jumping service, a teaching service. We need knowledge. Knowledge is taught, you understand? Okay. So, when we look at the scripture we read, it says two things. Wisdom and knowledge shall be, number one, the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. So that means that in order for you to be stable in an unstable world, in order for you to be stabilized in the midst of crisis, in order for you to be stabilized, no matter what is happening around you, you need wisdom and you need knowledge. And then he said, the same wisdom and knowledge shall be the strength of salvation. So you already have salvation because we are believers. But now for your salvation to be strengthened, then you need wisdom, you need knowledge. So question, what is salvation? Because many times, whenever we hear the word salvation, our definition of salvation is only limited to redemption from sin. But if you look at the Greek and Hebrew word translated salvation, is the word soteria and the word sozo. S-O-T-E-R-I-A and S-O-Z-O. And now these words translated salvation does not only mean redemption from sin. So the word salvation also means safety. The word salvation also means preservation. The word salvation also means healing. The word salvation also means deliverance. So, if we look at the word salvation as redemption, healing, deliverance, safety, preservation, that means that wisdom will be the, word, the security of your healing. Wisdom will be the security of your deliverance. Hello? And also the strengths. Are we getting it? So, if wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and strength of salvation, and salvation is healing, deliverance, safety, preservation. So, if you have wisdom, it will strengthen your redemption. If you have wisdom, it will strengthen your healing. If you have wisdom, it will strengthen your deliverance. If you have wisdom, it will strengthen your safety. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, wisdom is very, very important. Oh, I'm a child of God. Jesus has died so that I will not be sick. And then you go and sleep in a mosquito infested place and you eat foods that are corrupted with virus. Now, wisdom is not in place. So, your healing will not be strengthened. It will be weakened. Hello? Now, now wisdom and knowledge shall also strengthen your preservation or your safety. Hello? So, we need to understand that what we are going to be looking at in the next few weeks is very, very important for us as believers. Because many times, when we don't apply wisdom, then we take ourselves outside the covenant into his mercy. Now, as believers, we are covenant children of God. We are not supposed to live by the mercy of God. We are supposed to live by virtue of our covenant relationship with him. Feeding your children as a father is your parental responsibility. Feeding somebody on the streets that you don't know is what? It's a merciful welfare obligation. Understand? So, in the same vein, when you as a believer stay within the covenant, then God is committed. But when you go outside the covenant, then you open yourself to be in the mercy and welfare department. And that will not be your portion. So wisdom is very, very important. When we look at Matthew chapter 10, which is a scripture, if you are using my own Bible, that's what we read yesterday, I believe. Yeah, yesterday. If you are doing the one year Bible stuff. Now, wisdom and knowledge shall be what? The stability of your time. Now, in Matthew 10, Jesus Christ sends his disciples out. And by the time he got to verse 16, he makes a very profound statement. Matthew 10, 16. He said, I send you forth 
as sheep in the midst of wolves. He said, I realize that you are my children and I am sending you forth to live in the world and operate in the world and carry out my agenda. I recognize that you are sheep. But I also recognize that out there where I'm sending you to, out there where you have to operate, there are wolves there. How do you survive? He says, be wise as a serpent, be gentle as a dove. Now, why did I say to take three to five weeks? Because in a teaching meeting like this, we need to look at different angle. And it can actually take us ten weeks if we go deeper and deeper. Because, let me give you an example of deeper and deeper. If Jesus says be wise as serpent, we need to go and find out how is serpent wise. That can take us 30 minutes. Hello? So, this is a message you have to carry home and continue on your own. To really realize that you see, open heavens, you need wisdom. To partake of open heavens. That's why we're looking at wisdom for open heavens. He said, be wise as serpents. So, in order for you to survive in a world of wolves, you need to learn the wisdom of the serpents. Now, what is the wisdom of the serpent? Now, to know the wisdom of the serpent, we have to go to the very first place where we saw a serpent manifesting wisdom. And that takes us to the fall of man. So, number one, when the devil wanted to destroy the first family whereby he destroyed the whole world, he came and looked at the weakest link. Because God spoke to the man, God did not speak to the woman. So God spoke to the man, the man spoke to the woman. So by virtue of the fact that she did not hear from God direct, she heard from the man, there is a loss in value of that communication. It has become a third party communication. And in a third party communication, there can be effective communication, there can be ineffective communication, there can be miscommunication, there can be jarrasis, additions and subtraction, there can be amplification, there can be modification. So, hello, she now became a weaker link. So, when the devil came, the devil did not go to Adam went to Eve. So that's wisdom. Start from the place of least resistance. That's a wisdom. Hello? Yoruba If you are owing 100,000, you are owing 50,000, you are owing 20,000, you are owing 8,000. Pay 8,000 first. So that your debt will reduce from 4 to 3. That's wisdom of serpents. Starting from the place of least resistance. Now, the devil now came and said, Did God say you should not eat of every three? So, once you engage her in the conversation, in the multitude of words, the Bible says they wanted no sense. So, to cut a long story short, we saw that the fall of man came as a result of serpentine wisdom that manipulated situations and circumstances worked upon the emotion the psychology of humanity to get man to do what God does not want them to do so Jesus said be what? wise as happens so Jesus is acknowledging that in the world we live in now without wisdom you are doomed Without wisdom, you can't make it. Because the wickedness will not cease. So, your wisdom must continue to increase. Now, when you go further, you will also see Jesus. Oh, Jesus. In Luke 16, Jesus spoke again. This time around, he was giving them a story. And he said there was a man that had 
servants and managers handling his business. And the man began to hear rumor that his manager was doing some fraud. So the man said, okay, no problem. We are going to audit the account. So he sent a memo to the manager and said, we are going to audit the accounts of the company by the end of the year. So the guy said, no problem. So what did he do? Wisdom of serpent. So the guy went. The first man that was owing him money said, how much are you owing? You are owing me 200,000. You know what? This is a fresh invoice. You are no more owing 200,000. You are now owing 100,000. So he signed, the man signed. How much are you owing? You are owing 40,000. You are no more owing 40,000. You are now owing 15,000. So he signed. You know what he did? So everybody that was owing, he went to all of them to reduce the debt they are owing. <laughs> In order to increase the debt they are owing. Yes, sir. <laughs> you see, he reduced the debt they are owing the company to increase the debt they are owing him. So that after now, they cannot say, I don't know you. Because I can still bring back the old invoice. And checkmates. So at the end of the day, the old guy knew what he did. By the time the master came, say, ah, you too great, your brain too much. I know what you do. Well, Bill, I say you don't win. And the man didn't do anything. Because he said, I need wise people like you and me. And Jesus now said, so everything, Jesus now said, he said, look, the man did not rebuke his servants. The man did not punish his servants. So, so I am now telling you, Jesus now said his own in verse 8. He said, the children of this world, in their own thing, in their craftiness, they know how to manage it. So I am now telling you, you my children, to learn how to use wisdom to manage your own thing in the kingdom. Hello? And if you look at it from different, say, so the master commended the unjust one because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. That's Jesus, who, word of Christ in red. Hello? He say when it comes to 419, these guys are too much. When it comes to Amrabi, they are too, when it comes to them, they are too much. You too. When it comes to kingdom matters, when it comes to the affairs of your life, seek divine wisdom to know how to come out of confusing situations. So it's not saying go and do for one night. It's not saying go and do But it's saying that, look, in their team, they knew, in your own team, there is also a wisdom available to you. Like they had their own crafty wisdom, there is a divine wisdom. So that when you are confused, you can seek that same wisdom and it will bring you out of a confusing situation. What then is wisdom? I think we should just deal with that so they are close. What is wisdom? When we say wisdom is needed for you to win, what is wisdom? What kind of wisdom are we talking about? A close study of the Hebrew and Greek text reveals to us five definitions of wisdom. Five definitions of wisdom. Number one. Wisdom is insight into the true nature of things. Wisdom is insight into the true nature of things. Insight. So, to say you are wise means you know how things work. It's knowing how things work. That's wisdom. It's insight into the true nature of things. Now, there are three words that we normally confuse together. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But they are not the same. Knowledge is knowing what. Hello? So, if I'm to ask you now, what is this? 
What is this? You will say, okay, that's an handkerchief. That's a towel. You come up, so you know what it is. Now, knowledge is knowing what. What is that? It's a keyboard. What's this? It's a lapel microphone. So you know what it is. Now, understanding is knowing why. So why do we need this? Somebody may look now and be watching a video. And then in watching the video, they see bags of rice and yam and tissue paper and tin tomato on the altar. And they are watching video. And they come and say, ah, rice in here. Ah, ah, tissue, ah, issue in here. Now they know what. But ah, ah, you church, which kind of church is this one? Because they don't know why the rice is there. Ah, but why don't preach Lord rice in here? Oh, Lord rice. He's on the rice preaching. Ah, ah. So, um, they use food to decorate their own altar in that church. Now, because they don't know why, they lack understanding. So, they will criticize what they don't know because they lack understanding. Even though they have knowledge, they lack understanding because they don't know why. Hello? Are you getting that? But you see, wisdom is knowing how. That's wisdom. This is a keyboard. I know what it is. And many of us do. Hello? I know why it exists. And many of us do. But I don't know how to play. So, I have knowledge, I have understanding, but I lack wisdom in keyboard. Are you getting that now? Your mother is cooking in the kitchen. You are with her. So, every time she's putting the ingredients, you know the ingredients she's putting, but you don't know why she's putting it, and you don't know why she puts this one before that one, and you didn't ask questions. So, you have known what she's doing, but you don't have understanding of how to produce what she's doing. But even if you now ask question, say, Mommy, ah, why do you always put stew inside the egusi and turn it to now put it back inside? And she now tells you, see, if you put the stew inside the egusi and mix it, you can create a egusi paste. And then you can put it inside, it will now become ball inside. You can carry it, it's okay okay i didn't know that's why you used to do it oh now what are you doing you are asking question to gain understanding ah mommy ah you are doing pancake ah there, there is no oil put more oil he said no the oil should not be too much we just need a little oil to moist the bottom and then we'll point this eh. he said but when we are frying egg we normally put plenty and say, no, this is not egg, this is pancake. You get understanding. So, when mommy dies, or mommy travels, and you enter the kitchen, your wisdom will now be manifest. Are you getting that now? So, what is wisdom? It is insight into how things operate. It's not just, I know it. Can you do it? Can you produce results in it? Hey, I know it. I know, I know. No, no, no. Nobody's talking of knowledge. We're talking wisdom here. You can have knowledge and faith. Hello? Do you know that many students fail exam? Not because of lack of knowledge, but because of lack of understanding and lack of wisdom. Hello? Let me give you two examples. Understanding the question is the first step in answering the question. So you may know, you have read all the books, and you enter the exam all with every knowledge. But by the time they ask the question, you didn't even understand the question. Because they phrased it 
in a funny way. Hello? Woman of God, I think you went for an exam. I can't remember. You went for an exam or something, and they said you should fill a form, and you are supposed to fill with a baby person. I can't remember the story. Remind me so that I can tell. That's where it came to my mind now. Yeah. So you just return empty. Perfect. Now, she went for an exam and she did not read the instruction. So, the instruction at the top of the paper says, don't answer any question. So, she answered all the questions. But what saved that was she used pencil. So when she now finished answering, she now said, hey, let me read again. That's when she now saw the instruction. She now erased all the things and submitted on that paper and passed. What if she used Biro? There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying now? Because I'm um, God said, try, don't make noise, don't shout, let them get it. If it takes you five weeks, do it for five weeks. Don't worry. Because if you get it, you are going to see transformation in your destiny this year. Amen. Don't fool yourself. Even if this strike continues for two more, you will be making money. Amen. You, I'm telling you. Amen. All the instruments they are using in Ojot are not be somebody supplier. Am. All the ambulance t-shirt they are wearing. Not be somebody, the marker they are using to do the placard. Not be somebody. Are they not following the generator they are using in that rally? Are they not renting buses? What are you talking? Even government is doing all kinds of documentary now. All manner of advice. Who is doing it? Not be money that they pay. When wisdom begins to flow, you will see money. And make money where nobody's making money. Hello? Is there strike in America? Hello? Is there strike in London? So, strike in Nigeria does not mean global strike. So, do you have any business that is bringing funny in exchange? Wisdom. <laughs> Do you have any business bringing you for in exchange? Hello? <laughs> Let me move on. Number two. What is wisdom? Wisdom is sanctified common sense. Sanctified common sense. What does that mean? It means to be practically and sensibly wise. Common sense means what? To be practically that's practice, not theory. Action, not hypothesis. Practically and sensibly wise. So wisdom is what? Sanctified common sense. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. So, your mind is sanctified by the Spirit of God and you apply common sense in the way you do things and then you are free. Say, Pastor, prove it. In Luke 15, we see the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son had messed up. And after messing up, he began to face the trouble of his mess up. But what happened? The Bible says, and he came back to his... Common sense, near. Yeah? He came back to his... That means he has lost his senses. When he was doing what he was doing for him. He said, ah! he said, come. Even the servants in my father's house, even if he rejects me as a son, he should employ me as a servant. That's practical common sense. Ah, okay. Plan A, plan B, plan C, okay. Ability to think, analytical thinking. So, okay, if servants in my father's house, accommodation set to, feeding set to, normal allowance, ah, I beg, I will return. 
Now, the guy did not go for deliverance. Hands were not laid on him. He was not anointed with oil. He didn't take communion. He didn't do vision. He didn't even fast. He thought, oh, no, he thought about his life. Hello? See, come to think of it. If I stay like this, Uncle Ore, let me go. Worst case scenario, I will apologize. Even if you reject me as a son, he will take me as a servant. And I will have a roof. Instead of eating with pigs, he are a poor. This suffering is too much. Do you know that if you think about your life like that, you won't be jobless? You'll be a volunteer somewhere without salary. Say no with my certificate. How can I volunteer free? No. I can't reduce my value. Uncle Lore, you are jobless. Your wife is already being energy. Marriage is already in trouble. Instead of you to humble yourself and go to the place and say, please, I just employ me volunteer. I don't need salary. You sit down. You are not wise. Because even if your certificate is up there, you can start down here and create a value that will highlight your uniqueness. They will now know that, how come? How come you are able to do this? So, no, I have master's degree, but I just have to start from somewhere and say, oh, follow me. And then you know it does open. So the guy thought about his life. And he went back home. And you know the story. By the time he got back home, the father welcomed him and he got back into sonship. So, wisdom is what? Common sense. Sanctified common sense. To be practically and sensibly wise. Let me show you one from Old Testament. Second Kings 7. Four lepers. There was war. And they sat down and they calculated. They said, come. Come to think of it. If we sit here, we will die. Hello? If we go, we may die. Look at the thinking. Sitting here, death is sure. Going forward, death is a probability. That's wisdom. It's not that one angel came down and spoke to you. It's using your brain, your born again brain, to calculate and move by the spirit. He said, if we sit here, ah, he could, this one is certain. But if we move, paradventure, God may just decide to favor us. We may win. And the Bible says, when they moved, God moved. Is there a possibility that your life is stagnant because you are stagnant? Is there a possibility that God is waiting for you to make a move to bless your move? They went. Mark chapter 3. And the Lord went with them, confirming the word with signs and they had to go for God to go with them. They had to speak for God to have something to confirm. Number three, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to foresee and avoid it. Wisdom is what? The ability to foresee and avoid it. A woman you have not married and she said, I will slap you now. You have not married though. They say, oh, I love her. She will change. So before marriage, it was a promise and an intention. After marriage, it became a reality. Hello? Are you going to say now? Ability to foresee evil and avoid it without waving away one A driver you got two days after you got the driver, you, he was driving and you were talking with your wife and he said, oh guy, it's not like that. You know, madam is right. <laughs> he has not spent one week. You overlook it. Three days after 
that make it five days after the assumption. You are going now with your say, ah, Oga, this girl, madam, we're not too good, oh, madam. Go change. This cloth, not too good. Not too good. <laughs> and then you say, no, he's a good driver. Until your wife is pregnant for him. <laughs> then you will now realize that <laughs> you have carried more than yourself. Nothing just happens over now. It's so sad. But when you ignore warning signal, you become a casualty. Hello? Oh, Lord, the way this thing is going, we may say it will not start. It will start to, let's go out to ATM and collect money and keep it so that in case, because I see ATM drying up in three days. Hello? Eh? They are reloading now. Uh -huh. I, see, I see ATM drying up in uh, three days. So, Abby, so let's put something aside. <laughs> That's his wisdom. You are foreseeing the evil. And then, you are avoiding it. Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying now? Pastor, prove it. Well, let's see. <laughs> In Genesis 41, Joseph comes to Pharaoh. And he says, Pharaoh, there will be seven years of plenty. But I also see seven years of famine. Let's plan in advance. From now, 20% of all your income for the next seven years, we must store it somewhere so that when the days of famine come, we have something. That singular wisdom principle of savings and investment made Egypt a world power when famine came. Hello? Let me ask you a question. The fuel you are buying now, is it not the fuel they imported last year? So while somebody has chosen not to do anything, they say, ah, I'm not importing any fuel again until I know where this thing is going. Somebody has imported and said, load it somewhere. We will sell it in black market on the streets. Anyhow. So it is the fuel of 65 Naira that they have collected subsidy on last year that they are selling 141 naira now, but some people don't have to sell. Hello? Are you getting anything? You are getting something. Uh -huh. Because I'm only doing what I'm told to do. So no shouting, no jumping. Just let. So Joseph foresaw evil and then created the strategy to avoid it. When you look at First Kings 17, from verse 8, you see a woman called the widow of Zarephath. Now, there was seven years of famine, according to the word of the prophet. Three and a half years into the famine, the prophet became a victim of his prophecy and needed supernatural intervention. But God blessed him supernaturally through the ravens. And God now said, after the brook dry up, go to Zarephath. For I have prepared a widow there to feed you. Now, people of God, this was three and a half years into the famine. What has the woman been eating for three and a half years? What has she been drinking for three and a half years? So it means that for three and a half years, when everybody was complaining, she could not complain because she had enough savings, enough investment to carry her through. Do you have anything in store? Not even for this crisis, for your life. In the midst of this now, if you need to spend money by emergency, will you die because of 6,000? Hello? Hello? Do you know that your money in the bank is useless now? When they say money fail, this is an example. You understand, our money fail it. So, you have the money now, but nothing, nothing for you. Right, check now. <laughs> Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, three and a half years later, she was still eating. Widow! Hey, I'm a widow. Hey, I'm a widow. Must you die of welfare? The ministry of Jesus, there are many widows that were bringing millions. You are a wealthy widow. Hello? 
Three and a half years into the famine. The woman, it was when the investment was about to expire that God connected her to a prophet to take her to the supernatural. Why? Because no matter what you are going through, you must never compromise your covenant obligation with God. So God said, this woman, she has been faithful, tithe, offering, everything. I have prepared her to bless you. And when the man of God came, say, give me water. The man said, no problem. In the midst of famine. Three and a half years into famine, they said, give me water. You just say, ah, water, you'll be stranger. You don't know, say, for three and a half, even, ah, have you forgotten that where the prophet was coming from, the brook has dried up. So, rivers have dried up. And he's asking for water. Because many times we think it's only the, the water itself was a sign of our generosity. Say, no, 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 I have money. Ah, it's not, that's not my source. Come and drink. If you finish, God will provide. The man says, okay, as you are going, bring a sandwich. You say, eh, that one. <laughs> it won't be a problem, oh boy. You see, the one where remain now. I want to eat with my son so that I can die. The man said, no, give me first. Say, eh, okay, take. Hello? So what is wisdom? Ability to foresee evil and do what? Today, your daughter is living home. Her skirt is like this. Her breast is like that. Her hairstyle is like this. Mommy, I'll be back soon. You didn't say anything. Next week, her skirt is like this. Her blouse is like this. Her breast is like this. Mommy, see you later. You didn't say anything. Then you get a phone call. Are you the mother of... Yes, oh, sorry, she was committing abortion and she's died, so we need you to come and identify the body. Hey! Devil! You are the devil. Your son comes home today with Blackberry. A 16-year-old boy that is jobless. Where did he see Blackberry? Oh? You did not ask. Ah! Pa Emmanuel. Pa Emmanuel. <laughs> pa Emmanuel. Eda <laughs> Emmanuel. Ah! Who bought you? <laughs> only boy. Only boy. Only boy. Uh, Ah, mi o ti ri ise ti ri bolotu eleyi ah. Yi olomi de se wa lora ise ti fomo yi. You can't wear anything in my father's house without explaining where you got it from. But what kind of useless parents do we have today raising useless children? So my boy is doing well oh, stealing doing yahoo. Because they never push a cash for your hand. Now they spend them. You are budgeting yahoo money useless parent of useless children you didn't say come this see ah nobody that one that they call laptop be that ah you go there expensive oh where you see money you did ask question the day they now show him on television sitting down among his group looking like this <laughs> you are now calling a pastor that is a prayer pastor please pray Hey, they don't carry my bikini. No, I, I'm not that. I will, you know, I will switch off my phone. <laughs> you don't call me for useless things. So what is wisdom? Foresee evil. Avoid it. When you see the skirt coming out, say, hey, my daughter, fine girl. Pe, 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 pe. Sit down. Say, sure you know you are beautiful. Ah, I remember when I was 16. Then you tell her your story. By the time you finish, you won't need to say anything again. But you, you are trying to prove you are a saint. You are not using your story to let her know how your life was useless, how that man in their father was a breakthrough. That God used to say to you. But because you don't want your husband's head to swear, you are keeping the information that will secure your tomorrow.
Hello? Let's move on. Proverbs 6. Go. No, we are not going there. <laughs> we'll go there in February. <laughs> go to the ants, you sluggard. Who prepares his food in summer so that when winter comes, he's secured? Hello? My mother will always say, Oh, ti dodo. O fek mommy. You have not got into a river, you want to fetch water. Take the journey first. When you get to a river, nobody will tell you not to drink. Nobody will tell you not to carry. Don't put the cart before the horse. So, wisdom is what? Foresee you. Proverbs says, go to the ants. God is sending you to animals to learn. Not even animals, insects. Hello? Say, go and learn. He said, who in the midst of summer, when everybody's enjoying? Didn't you get bonus in December? Oh, no, be a pani. Hello? Abi? I told my staff, I, sa- I sat them down. <laughs> I said, look, I see evil in the ne- I see a cloud. You people have connected big bonus. Let me pay you December salary when we resume in the first week. Ah, daddy, ah, I got a boy. So I paid them in December 28th. It's okay. So in December, they collected two salaries, multiple. So now the debate is, and I want to throw it into the atmosphere. If this strike continues for two months, am I obligated to pay salary as a CEO? So let's go and find out the answer. So if it continues for one month, five months, six months. <laughs> no, uh, wait. Uh, <laughs> Huh? What? <laughs> ah, you see? You know, you know, you know what this reaction tells me? You know what this reaction tells me? You are all salary earners. Now, I hear somebody say it's a contract, Abby. What is a contract? Did you work? <laughs> eh? <laughs> so hello let's let's go on facebook go on twitter go and find out listen eh? civil service edit power is a different thing no wait ah, uh, i'm only asking a question for your consideration because that's how it started in the Arab Spring before you know it God forbid God forbid that February we are still in strike March we are still in strike April we are still in strike God forbid oh. so all this grammar and English and analysis hello so what am I saying? The little money you have. Thank God for fasting. Maybe we we'll make it 40 days. No, there's there's no school. <laughs> Look, school fees we collect their money. So that's why you should start your own school. <laughs> Hello, I love this message. Oh, I didn't know it would be sweet like this. Oh, hey. <laughs> Number four, what is wisdom? What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to choose good above evil. 
That's wisdom. The ability to choose good above evil. Let me take us back to the serpent again, or the garden. The Bible says that Adam and Eve had two options. Tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now, the difference is this. The tree gave them the knowledge of good and evil, but did not have the power for them to choose good. Do you understand that? So, by eating it, they knew that this is bad. This is good. But they did not have the power to do the good one. But the tree of life will have given them the knowledge of good and evil plus the ability to say, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. So, what is wisdom? Wisdom is not, ah, that's bad. That's wrong. You that say that is bad, do you do bad? That's wisdom. Ability to do what? To choose good above evil. You know this thing is bad. I say, I am not doing that. You don't do. That's wisdom. Not that I know it's bad, but the devil made me do it. You are foolish. Because even though you know it's bad, you see and you blame the Someone, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves shall not fail, but you bring forth his fruit in season. And whatever I do, I shall. So, what will make him to get to that place where he will be bringing fruits, he will be prospering, is the fact that he knows how to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, stand not in the way of sinner, sit not in the seat of the scornful. So, you see three things there walk, stand, sit. By the time you start walking with the wrong crowd, you have started the journey of destruction. After you are walking, eh, 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 I didn't know. Ah, but, eh. Oh, that's true. I, but I thought I heard that. So, okay, eh, okay, tell me more. You stop. I beg, sit down. Eh, this is serious. So, eh, you mean it? That's the end. He didn't plan to sit. He started by walking. Then he stood. Then he sat. So, in order for you to be fruitful, to prosper, you need wisdom. What's that wisdom? Avoid evil. Choosing good above evil at all times. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. And Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat. Another translation says, and Daniel resolved within himself. Another translation says, and Daniel made up his mind. Another translation says, and Daniel determined within himself that I will not do this evil. That is what? That is wisdom. Genesis, Joseph. Potiphar's wife offered him free escaping. Somebody else will have said, Ah, or Gagbo, Fumiotu, Fumilaya, go on, son. A foolish man will have spent the man's money and carried the man's wife. But guess what? The guy said, no, I cannot do this great wickedness and sin against my God. Because it's not about your husband. It's about God. That is what? Wisdom. So wisdom saved him. Finally, because of time. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. When we become Christians, God does not say because you are a Christian now your brain is useless. No. Christianity is not stupidity. A man one day in the Bible saw and witnessed a breaking news. And the king sent somebody else 
to go and break the news. The guy said, no, I can break the news. I can break the news. He said, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't know how to break news. You know the news, but you don't know how to break news. He said, no, and he ran to go and break the news and it cost him his life. Hope you know you saw a man hit by a car and while you people were rushing him to the hospital he died and then you now have a knowledge but you carry his purse and you saw his ID card and his address you now carry yourself to the house I say hello and I beg, which of now know Mr. John, John, John? He said, I was happy with the world. Yeah, you also are not there. Yo. <laughs> I did there one more to eat them. Now, do you have knowledge? Yes, but you don't have wisdom. You don't break news like that. You investigate, find out are there elders there. Does the woman have a sister? Or a brother or somebody around you, you you strategize on how to use the knowledge so wisdom is the right application of knowledge because hey, but what i'm doing hey, 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 hey am i not saying the truth but it's the truth no the bible says speaking the truth in law the bible we read today if you have read the genesis when they were telling jacob because Esau has married from another family. They now say, Jacob, don't marry from this land, though. Marry from somewhere else. Because you know, they, they, uh, hey, Esau now say, hey. So if I marry from this place, these people will be hot. Let me go and carry another wife. <laughs> Hello? So he got a knowledge. And he said, no, let me now use this knowledge against them. Carry another wife. Making like three wives, only one man. You never start life. You don't get a wife. Hello? Did you get anything this morning? Bring out your anointing oil and rise up on your feet. Put the oil in your hand. Just one very powerful prayer point. Lord, baptize me with wisdom for open heavens. Anoint yourself and begin to pray. Lord, baptize me with wisdom for open heavens. Baptize me with wisdom. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, baptize me with wisdom. Lord, baptize me with wisdom. For open heavens. Lord, deliver me from foolishness. Lord, in every day of my life, let the anointing of wisdom, ability to foresee evil and avoid it, ability to choose good above evil, Ability to rightly apply knowledge, insight into the true nature of things. Lord, let it begin to flow in every area of my life. Baptism of wisdom, anointing of wisdom. Let it flow in every department of my life, in every department of my destiny, even in this season. Lord, let creativity flow. Let innovation flow. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, thank you. Because you are a faithful God. Lord, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I stand with faith upon the obedience to preach this message. You said, teach wisdom. I said, ah, teaching on Sunday morning, won't it be boring? You say, just do what I said you should do. Lord, because of the fact that I have obeyed you to do what you have asked me to do, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, may foolishness seize in your destiny. <laughs> Lord, I pray in the name that is above every name that from today a new level of wisdom begins to operate in your life in the name of Jesus. When 
they heard Jesus, they said, what manner of wisdom is this? Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, the wisdom that honors, the wisdom that elevates, the wisdom that favors, the wisdom that distinguishes. Lord, let it rest upon your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, by the anointing in this house this morning, I declare that everyone here will win by wisdom. From today, ah, the ability to choose good above evil rests upon you in the name of Jesus. From today, the ability to foresee evil and avoid it rests upon you in the name of Jesus. From today, by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the ability to rightly apply knowledge comes upon you in the name of Jesus. In the name that is above every name, because you have the mind of Christ, from today, begin to operate in sanctified common sense. Ah, those who know, rule over those who do not know. In the name that is above every name, insights into the true nature of things. Ability to know how things work and rule in your sector. Let it come upon you now in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. It is well with your family. It is well with your business. It is well with your career. It is well with your health. It is well with your ministry. It is well with your home. In the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. And I declare that you will never be a victim of evil. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Shout three powerful amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for spending time listening to this message. 1,000 good intentions are not as powerful as one action. As you put the principles and truths lent to work, your testimony will be next. For counseling, prayer request, testimony or more products, visit our website or contact us through all our contact channels printed on the sleeve. Give him praise.